Hello, God bless you. My name is Stephen. I'm the pastor of Graffiti Fellowship Church in Brooklyn, New York, and it's time for today's Daily Devotion. Uh, our Daily Devotion series is where we take a chapter from the Bible, and we read it together each day. We're reading the Gospel of John currently. It's the fourth Gospel in the New Testament, and today we're reading John chapter 4. I'm just turning there now. I'm reading from the New Living Translation today. There are many different English translations, and they're all great. They all have something to add. Uh, we're using the NLT or the New Living Translation simply because it's the easiest reading level. That's it. It's as, it's as, it's as spiritual as that. But uh, we think that there's real value in understanding what we read in this translation we find is the easiest to understand for the greatest number of people. John chapter 4 is a little longer than the... Uh, past couple of chapters, 54 verses. And in this chapter, we're going to see a lot about Samaritans. And uh, it's important to understand that the the Jews and the Samaritans had a, uh, a little bit of a tense or hostile relationship. The Jews had a low regard for the Samaritans. And the Samaritans, uh, well, anytime somebody looks down on you, that you know, doesn't make you like them all the more. And so uh, there's kind of this, um, this tension there um, and prejudice that we will see. Uh, we'll, we'll see evidence of that in, in John chapter 4. Um, we're also going to see the gospel come and, and heal that. And then we're going to see Jesus also bring miraculous healing. To, uh, to a young boy. John chapter 4 begins this way. Jesus knew the Pharisees had heard about uh, the fact that he was baptizing and making more disciples than John, though Jesus himself didn't baptize them, his disciples did. So he left Judea and returned to Galilee, and he had to go through Samaria on the way. Eventually he came to the Samaritan village of Sychar, near the field that Jacob gave his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired from the long walk, sat wearily beside the well at noontime. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Please give me a drink. He was alone at that time because the disciples had gone into the village to buy some food, and the woman was surprised, for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, You're a Jew, and I'm a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Why are you speaking to me, she says. You Jews never speak to us. And Jesus replied, If you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. <laughs> but sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket, she said. The well's very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides, do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us this well? How can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoyed? Jesus replied, Anyone who drinks this water from this well will soon become thirsty again, but those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh, bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Please, sir, the woman said, Give me this water. I'll never be thirsty again, and I won't have to come here and, and draw this water. Go and get your husband, Jesus told her. I don't have a husband, the woman replied. Jesus said, you're right. You don't have a husband. You've had five husbands, and you aren't even married to the man you're living with now. You're telling the truth. Sir, the woman said, you must be a prophet. So tell me. Why is it that you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place of worship, while we Samaritans claim it is here on Mount Gizrim? This is where our ancestors worshipped. And Jesus replied, Believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when we it will no longer matter whether you worship the Father on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship, while we Jews know all about him, for salvation comes from the Jews. But the time is coming, and indeed it is here now, when true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit, and in truth. The Father's looking for those who will worship Him that way. For God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. 
The woman said, I know the Messiah is coming, the one who's called Christ, and when he comes, he's going to explain everything to us. And then Jesus told her, I am the Messiah. Just then his disciples came back and they were shocked to find him talking to a woman, but none of them had the nerve to ask, what do you want with her? Why are you talking to her? The woman left her water jar beside the well and ran back to the village telling everyone, come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could he possibly be the Messiah? So the people came streaming from the village to see him, and meanwhile the disciples were urging Jesus, Rabbi, eat something. But Jesus replied, I have a kind of food you know nothing about. Did someone bring him food while we were gone? The disciples asked each other, and then Jesus explained, My nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me, from finishing his work. You know the saying, four months between planting and harvest, but I say, wake up and look around. The fields are already ripe for harvest. The harvesters are paid good, the harvesters are paid good wages, and the fruit they harvest is people brought to eternal life. What joy awaits both the planter and the harvester alike. You know the saying, one plants and another harvests, and it's true. I sent you to harvest where you didn't plant. Others had already done the work, and now you will get to gather the harvest. Many Samaritans from the village believed in Jesus because the woman had said, He told me everything I ever did. When they came out to see him, they begged him to stay in the village, so he stayed for two days, long enough for many more to hear his message and believe. And then they said to the woman, Now we believe, not just because of what you told us, but because we have heard him ourselves. Now we know that he is indeed the Savior of the world. Verse 43, At the end of two days, Jesus went on to Galilee, and he himself had said that a prophet is not honored in his own hometown, and yet the Galileans welcomed him. For they had been in Jerusalem at the Passover celebration and had seen everything he did there. As he traveled through Galilee, he came to Cana, where he had turned the water into wine. There was a government official in nearby Capernaum whose son was very sick, and when he heard Jesus had come from Judea to Galilee, he went and begged Jesus to come to Capernaum to heal his son who was about to die. Jesus asked him, Will you never believe in me unless you see miraculous signs and wonders? The official pleaded, Lord, please come now before my little boy dies. And then Jesus told him, go back home, your son will live. And the man believed what Jesus said and started home. While the man was on his way, some of his servants met him in the news. Uh, they brought the news that his son was alive and well. He asked them when the boy had begun to get better, and they replied, yesterday afternoon at one o'clock. His fever suddenly disappeared. Then the father realized that that was the very time Jesus had told him, your son will live. And he is his, and his entire household believed in Jesus. This was the second miraculous sign Jesus did in Galilee after coming from Judea. That concludes John chapter 4. Uh, we'll leave it there. Won't offer any uh, additional commentary there. Um, we'll thank you, though, for joining us for this chapter. It's a blessing to have you with us, and I hope you've been blessed by our brief time together. If you think that this video might bless others, please share it. We're not trying to accomplish anything via uh, this channel other than to put God's Word uh, in people's hands, proverbially speaking, to give people a tool that helps them uh, access the Scriptures and uh, include a, a daily time of devotion with the Lord through, through reading the Bible. So if you know of somebody who might be blessed, do share this, and I hope you'll also uh, join us next time as we read John chapter 5. God bless.